Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Iñi Uyarte and today we are going to face the lower limb nerves and its boss, the sciatic nerve, what will be the first one. The sciatic nerve is originated by the L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 roots and they get together and form the sciatic nerve. Its origin is intrapelvic, but if we take a posterior view, we will notice how it becomes extrapelvic through the greater, greater sciatic foramen and usually underneath the piriformis muscle. It's, this relationship is very important. But there are several possibilities, anatomic possibilities. This isn't the most common by far, but there are other possibilities. If you want to take a look at this article of the, of the doctors Hernando and Teresal, very, very interesting, we'll find several possibilities with the nerve as a unique with a unique component through the piriformis, above the piriformis, or through a, a B component piriformis muscle, or with the nerve with two components separated with different possibilities. Okay, so the anatomic variations are very huge, so don't forget it and uh, think about it when you examine the sciatic nerve. Once the sciatic nerve has left the interpelvic area, it uh, penetrates into the deep gluteal space. This is a very important space, we are going to check now. This space has several boundaries, several limits, and is located underneath the gluteus maximus. So the posterior limit of the glute deep gluteal space is the gluteus maximus. If we take off this muscle, we will uh, notice several structures. The deep uh, gluteal space is medial to the linea aspera of the femur and the iliotibial band, is lateral to the greater and lesser sciatic foramens, and posterior to the femur bo bone. There are several muscles included into this space. The first of all is the piriformis muscle, just below the superior gemellus, the obturator internus, the inferior gemellus, quadratus femoris, and the proximal insertion of the, the, the origin okay, of the hamstring's tendon. So a very, very important space. There are other structures like um, nerves and vessels, but we are not going to talk about them because it's not interesting if we're talking about ultrasound. Okay, okay so very important the relationship between the piriformis and the sciatic nerve and as you can see here the sciatic nerve is underneath the piriformis deep to the piriformis but it becomes superficial as we go distal and is above the superior gemellus the obturator internus the inferior gemellus and the quadratus femoris and medial sorry sorry lateral to the hamstring's origin very important these relationships once it continues distal, it is related, it has a very close relationship with the biceps femoris muscle. It's always underneath, deep to the biceps femoris muscle, and it starts lateral to the biceps femoris and will finish medial to the biceps femoris. And then, very close to the knee, it divides into its terminal branches, the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. It innervates the posterior capsule of the hip and several motor branches to the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and on depth, partially it innervates the adductor magnus. Okay, and how we can see these structures with ultrasound? Depending on the patient, we will use some convex probes or linear probes. Usually in sp uh, sports people, uh, thin people, we can use uh, linear probes with 10 MHz uh, frequencies, but in other people uh, more uh, strong or uh, of fat, um, we will use convex probes with 5 to 8 MHz uh, transducers. Okay? To locate these structures, I recommend, highly recommend to be, begin 
palpating the posterior, posterior superior iliac spine and placing the probe over this bony area, this bony landmark. We will obtain this image with the uh, posterior superior iliac sp uh, spine here and this cortical must be very clearly seen. This is the iliac bone. This will be the gluteus maximus, the gluteus maximus, and this will be the gluteus medius. Very important to have a good view of this cortical. Once we have this image, I, I, I've put a CT image uh, over the ultrasound image to um, think about the structures we are just about to see. So this is the iliac bone, as you can see here. Okay, then we know the, pre the piriformis muscle has this uh, angulation, this orientation, so we can uh, turn the probe this 15 degrees to achieve a good orientation when we are going to check the piriformis muscle. And then we will go distal. At this area, we are over the iliac bone, so we will face the cortical of the bone, but at some point, as we go distal, we will be over the great, greater sciatic foramen. So the cortical will be interrupted and a foramen will be seen here. This is the gluteus maximus, this is the piriformis muscle just below the gluteus maximus, so this is the greater foramen. Usually the gluteus, uh, sorry, usually the piriformis muscle is hypochoic and we can notice here below the muscle this uh, slightly hypochoic image, not very clear uh, here, it will be the sciatic nerve. It's difficult to find here the sciatic nerve, but we know it should be located here. So as we go distal, we will, we will focus on this area and we will see how this hypochoic image underneath a muscle will be located above the following muscle, the superior gemellus, and this will be the sciatic nerve. As we go distal, we notice the second, the, the following muscle, which we, will be the obturator internus, very, very characteristic with this thick tendon inside. So this is the obturator internus, and you can see here the sciatic nerve with this good image, okay, with this linear probe, so the, this patient is young, is healthy, he's a uh, sports-related uh, uh, patient, okay? So it's easy to see. But in other uh, type of patients, maybe we will use the convex probe. As we continue distally, then the, we follow the sciatic nerve, sciatic nerve, and we will notice the quadratus femoris muscle below the gluteus maximus. This is the ischial tuberosity, and this is the most cranial portion of the hamstring's origin. If we turn the probe 90 degrees over the nerve, we will notice this fascicular pattern very clearly. This is uh, cranial, this is distal, so we can see how the sciatic nerve goes intrapelvic below this muscle. This will be the piriformis muscle on its transverse view. This is the superior gemellus, and this is the tendon of the obturator internus. If we go slightly distal, following the path of the nerve, this is a better image of the rotator of the hip. This is the superior gemellus, inferior gemellus, and between them, the obturator internus. And this is the sciatic nerve below the gluteus maximus. Okay, and let's check a video with all these structures. We begin at the posterior superior iliac spine. Very important to have a good view of the cortical of the iliac bone. And then we go distal and the greater sciatic foramen appears here. This is the sacrum, this is the iliac bone, and this is the piriformis muscle with this hyperechoic area just below, gluteus maximus. If we are not sure, we can use this technique to rotate the hip and we will notice the movement of the piriformis without, move, uh, without the move, movement of the gluteus maximus. It can help us to distinguish and to confirm we are over the piriformis muscle. If we follow the theoretical position of the sciatic nerve here, 
sorry okay here we will notice how it begins it becomes superficial over the superior gemellus and this is the obturator internus tendon and muscle okay and you can see here very very accurately the sciatic nerve below the gluteus maximus if we continue distal then we are at the quadratus femoris muscle this will be the ischial tuberosity and the proximal cranial insertion of the hamstrings, origin of the hamstrings. As we go distal, we will have a better view of the hamstrings here. With its two components, this one, the superficial one, will be the common tendon of the biceps femoris and semitendinosus, and this, this one will be the semimembranosus component of the hamstrings origin. This is the sciatic nerve and this is the quadratus femoris muscle. Okay, again, we can turn now the probe over the sciatic nerve on its long axis. Here you can see its fascicular pattern, the rotators of the hip, so this is the obturator internus, superior gemellus, and how the nerve becomes deep to this muscle here, this is cranial, so this will be the piriformis muscle, and how it becomes intrapelvic cranial to the piriformis. Okay, so this is the first checking of the sciatic nerve at its exit of the intrapelvic area. But sometimes this area is not easy to see, so we can, uh, we may have, um, we may need another um, another way to check the sciatic nerve. And this one is to locate the sciatic nerve at this area. In, in, in the um, junction between the proximal third of the posterior thigh and the medial one. If we place a probe transverse at this area, we will seek the sciatic nerve, it's easy to see, and uh, because it's uh, superficial, and we can follow the nerve proximal till we reach the ischial tuberosity. So this, this time we are going to check the sciatic nerve from distal to proximal, when the first approach is not uh, easy to perform. At this point, we will have difficulties at the gluteus maximus because of its uh, volume. It may be difficult to check the structures at this level. And in these cases, we can palpate the ischial tuberosity and place the probe over the ischial tuberosity. This is another tip. And once we have checked this bone, lamp, bony landmark, we will uh, know that the, this is the insertion, the origin of the hamstrings and that the sciatic nerve will be located just lateral to this area and go distal. Okay, so if we place the probe between the proximal third and the medial third of the posterior thigh at this level, we will notice this image of the common tendon of the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris. So this is lateral, this is medial, and this uh, image is the landmark we must seek because it's very easy to find the sciatic nerve be below underneath the common tendon. This reminds the uh, Mercedes brand star uh, Martinoli Tolas yeah, and I agree is a good uh, image because in the center of the star is the sciatic nerve and the lateral arm is below the biceps femoris the medial one will contain the semimembranosus muscle, the tendon, sorry, and the semitendinosus muscle just above. But it's a good image to find the sciatic nerve just in the middle of the star. As we go proximal, we will see how the sciatic nerve is coming close to the tendons, the common tendon and the semimembranosus tendon. Here, it's a common, common tendon, semimembranosus tendon. Again, the common tendon and the semimembranous tendon are going very, very close. The sciatic nerve is approaching these tendons. We are very close to the insertion of the ischial tuberosity. And the next view is the ischial tuberosity with the insertion of the tendons. This is the common tendon, this is the semimembranous tendon, and this is the sciatic nerve located just here. So this will be the quadratus femoris.
This is the same area we have just checked in the first approach. This is the end of the first approach. So this is the end from distal to proximal of the second approach, the same area. And we can check this way with a video. We start in the middle of the side, in the, in the junction between the proximal third and the medial third. And this will be the sciatic nerve. And we can see and check this nerve as we are going proximal. So this is the common tendon. This is the semi-membranosus tendon. And as we are going proximal, the muscles of the bicep femoris disappears. This is still semi-tendinosus muscle. And this is the semi-membranosus tendon, conjoint tendon, and sciatic nerve coming very, very close to these structures. This is the quadratus femoris here, and this is the ischial tuberosity. So we can now continue proximal, and above these structures, we will find the obturator internus, both gemelli and piriformis. So this is another approach to find the same structures we have just checked in the first approach. Finally, the distal sciatic nerve. If we follow the nerve to uh, 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 distal in the thigh, we will notice its division into its terminal branches, the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. So we follow the, the sciatic nerve, as we have just uh, said before, always related with the biceps femoris. This is the two heads of the biceps femoris. This is long head of the biceps femoris with its characteristic trapezoidal shape. And this is the long head, the short head, sorry, with this quadrangular shape. And between these two portions, these two heads of the biceps femoris, there is the sciatic nerve on death. Okay. So as we go distal, we will see the division of the sciatic nerve into its tibial and common peroneal branches. We can follow both branches. And this is the subject for the uh, for next videos. Here, this small advance with the common peroneal nerve here and the sciatic nerve here. Uh, sorry, tibial nerve here. Okay, this is sorry. This is the biceps femoris with its quadrangular short head of the biceps. This trapezoidal long head, and between them on death will be located the sciatic nerve here you can see here then we will continue till we notice the division of the sciatic nerve just here is the vision this is a tibial nerve bigger and the common peroneal nerve this is lateral this is medial and if we follow the common peroneal nerve we we'll notice its relationship with the fibula. But this is a subject for next video. Okay, that was all I wanted to tell you about the sciatic nerve until uh, it, div it divides on its terminal branches. I hope you like it. If you like, please check the like tag. And uh, if you have any comment or any questions, just leave comments. I will be pleased to answer all the comments I can. Thank you very much.